Hey, we're going to get into your crusade against criminals. First blow is something wide open mm. of 2016. Yep. And whew, there's a lot of torpedoes uh, in, in the tubes, and uh, just mm. which one will I fire? What will be my target? I wish I could, I wish I could prosecute 10 crooks today. But before we get into that... But I can't. <laughs> well, you could if you... You know, we were a bit more swift getting into them. You know that I tried as, as hard as I can to, to bring as much justice raining down as possible, but mm. there's a lot of stuff, a lot of backstory I have to tell everyone, and, you know, it's important that people see my side of law enforcement. Here's a small bit of backstory for something we're doing this week. Uh, the great reason to listen to this show this week is because you'll hear a better show mm-hmm. on the air. We're going to simulcast live in the London at the same time as going all around Australia with uh, a Christian O'Connell show on a, on a station called Absolute Radio in London. Huge over there. It might be the first time two different radio stations in two different countries have run the same contest. Yes. Which we're going to do a contest where if you, and you can register now to go to hamishnady.com, if you would like to go, if you're free to go mm. to the UK this weekend, yes. you could be you're our a person mate. selected. Now, Christian O'Connell show, they're doing the same thing, but selecting an English person to come over to Australia. They will, you'll swap, you'll fly past each other somewhere in the air. Sounds fun, but there is, there's a catch. The idea is when you get there, you kind of will be blindfolded, taken straight to Christian O'Connell's studio, a London yeah. breakfast radio show. It's great in the heart of Soho. And you'll be hearing that live on this show and around this country at the same time. You'll play paper, rock, scissors against him. If you lose, you have to go straight back to the airport and mm. fly back another 48 hours economy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't have to put economy in. No one assumed we were flying someone first class. <laughs> but obviously, it certainly economy. makes it a sting. But if you beat him, you, uh, you're there for a week. You're there for a week. All expenses paid. Yeah, great economy, <laughs> <laughs> which is very exciting. Living it up, uh, living up in. So hamishnandy.com. If you want to represent Australia, someone will be coming up representing England, but and will take us on to paper rocks. You got to be ready to leave this weekend. It's you and a mate too yep. that get to go. Mm. Um, so you will have someone to keep you company yep. uh, as you guys fly back. Going, God, I knew we should have gone rock. Um, <laughs> but it is. But you've got to be ready to go this weekend. So don't, you know, be a criminal yeah. who can't go to England, or don't be. Going to Africa this weekend. Be free this weekend. Be ready to go. Mm. And good luck. And I would say go rock. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> they might be listening. I got a hunch. About my throwing them off. Maybe some Andy. Well, Ando, it pains me to do this, um, but unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. Mm. And I was hoping all the cases I blew wide open mm. last year, all the thievery and the double crossing, triple crossing. I think we had one quad cross. Yeah. <laughs> Which mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, I think it goes one way then another then back then. It's probably similar to a double <laughs> cross. Yeah, exactly. Twice as much effort as a double cross. I don't think we ever saw a quin qu- cross. <laughs> I don't think we ever saw a quin double cross. But it, uh, by the same token, mm. I'd be sadly uh, not surprised if I saw a quin yeah. double cross yeah. because we're not happy with. We're, we're happy with just uni crosses. <laughs> yeah. Well, you meant to just monocross people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not, you know, yeah, not, any doubles not start triples. climbing up the numerical ladder. In fact, I think now that I think about it, you're not meant to cross people at all. You're just meant to do no crossing of anyone. Yeah. However, when I opened up the floodgates and I said, listen, if people would like to nominate companies or people or situations that they think are a little bit duplicitous, a mm. little bit sneaky... Mm. Are there weasels out there? Yep. And if so, I'll get my metaphorical weasel net and I'll catch them. Yep. So we were flooded, and that made me sad. And I thought, look, I'll prosecute this, as I did last year, mm. with absolute steely-eyed determination mm-hmm. and rigour. And hopefully, mm. by, the, by Christmas of 2015, all crime will stop. Has it? Has it? <laughs> That was my goal, yeah. and I was, and I at the time people criticised me for having a lofty goal, yeah. and maybe in hindsight it was lofty mm-hmm. because crime has not stopped. If anything, oh. it's, uh, it's there's been a slight uptick, <laughs> <laughs> based on a lot of evidence and just based on my vibe. Yeah. I'm the only guy oh. out of the three of us that's on the front line, yeah. out there every day. So mm. I enjoy. I allowed myself one or two afternoons off over summer, but mostly I was chasing up cases, okay, and doing. Building up cases to a medium level yep. of investigation. Finish any of them? I probably should have finished more. Yep. Um, but it- <laughs> Finish any of them? <laughs> yeah, got, got one. Got one. Stand back! He's set to blow! Yeah, look out! Fire in the hole! Hamish is blowing this wide open! Amazing! Amazing! He's done it again! Oh, what a great guy. 
Now, I thought as a gesture to the people, because it is the people's show, I'd start the year off with a case that has come in from the people. <laughs> <laughs> as you well yeah. know, <laughs> a lot of the time, <laughs> the it's people me. aren't surprised. <laughs> it's me. It's me walking around. I mean, whether I'm on duty or off duty, it's irrelevant because I'm always on duty and I'm always looking out for scoundrels and, yeah. you know, these weasels. Rat bags. These rat bags, and I'm flying around on my truth eagle, and I'm trying to shine justice lasers on things, but I can't be... Definitely, rascals and rascals, both pronunciations. (laughs) I can't be all places at once. So I I do get a flood of stuff coming in from people. I I certainly don't need any more, do I, Jack? No, sir, Bob. Keep them coming in, though. (laughs) Hamishnady.com. Keep them coming in. Follow the links. Clearly mark it. Don't Please, no generic ones we've already done. Uh, The more specific to you, the better. So don't need them um, because I'm doing all the I'm doing the back backbreaking work anyway, and I know I'm glossing over this and I'm being a bit too quick in my intro. But I do I should just point out that I thought it would be a nice gesture yep. to just use a case that's been brought to me. Your phone's gone to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to read the case off your phone. My phone's it's gone, shocked. It's gone to sleep during your prolonged. Do you know what? I was probably hating. I was probably hacked. Yep. By who knows who. <laughs> probably someone in the dark web paid someone to hack me to try and stop me from reading this case. But I won't be stopped by hackers, and Oh, you might be stopped by the news. <laughs> <laughs> the six o'clock news. <laughs> now everyone there, producers outside cheering, he's waving his arms and dancing. Ando, this comes in from Corey. Uh, He's got a favourite supermarket, as I think a lot of us would these days, that, that has a sushi department. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a cool thing these days to go. We've got a fresh-made sushi department. They, they, it, they're a 24 hour supermarket, um, and it's a local one to his area, and it says sushi made fresh daily. Uh-huh. Okay. And on the box is a sticker, and it goes made fresh daily. Um, and then it was, then it has a little thing that says made and the date. Yeah, great. Okay. So you know, if it's the 14th of January, you pick it up 14th of the 1st, 2016. Yep. Great. This is made today. It was the 22nd of December. He went in to get some sushi. It was 10 15 at night. Mm-hmm. He's included the receipt. On the front of the sushi, it says made 23rd Hang of on. December. So it's either sushi from the future <laughs> that they're eating in Terminator, unlikely, or they're pulling the magazine trick yeah. of going Cosmos August edition comes out in July <laughs> and it's not made fresh daily. It's made one day in advance. We gotcha. So Andy. <laughs> It is a Monday, my friend. It's a Monday. It's been so busy today. Yeah. Um, geez, we almost, if you're a crook, you would have just been looking at the clock winding down to <laughs> six o'clock <laughs> going, I've done it. <laughs> I've made it. Yep. He hasn't blown anything wide open. My mm. scam rides for another day. Yep. Well, not if you're the crook that's in my crosshairs today, Andy, because I've got a fairly big scandal to blow wide open. You come after all crooks, for people who don't know, on a Monday, uh, they might be a blackmailer. Yep, a oh. green mailer. Yep, don't like that. Any of the colours. Any colours. Red mailer. <laughs> yeah. Don't mail me. <laughs> Clay. <laughs> um, Red mailing, not as uh, not as common as black mailing, but it does um, happen. A sadly, smug- <laughs> a smuggler. Yes, um, I don't like smugglers, especially the ones that you would often see on the old TV show Skippy that are in the national park stealing lizards and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> smuggling. That. If there's one thing that uh, that. L is on a higher shelf of prosecutory, you know, anger for me. The one thing that gets your goat, literally, is reptile smugglers. smugglers. And that's not on. Yep. (laughs) Today's not a reptile smuggler that I've taken down and as I fly around on my truth eagle, shining my justice lasers on injustice. It is something that affects us all, potentially. Stand back! She's set to blow! Ah, Look here! is blowing this wide open. Amazing. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. Um, <laughs> this, this, this case that I was, uh, that I've investigated today, I started following this up myself. I, I noticed this phenomenon about a year ago and I started collating research. And it's when I got an email um, from a young lady called Sophie. It's when I really went, okay, time to time to spark things up. So it mostly was me, <laughs> mostly was me doing this work, and this yeah. was the case I thought of. So it didn't didn't Sophie didn't email it first, then you went, oh, okay, that's a good one. Oh, at hamishani.com? Yep. 
Yep. Keep them coming in if you've got them. I mean, that is the place where people send in cases. For- you don't need them. I do not need them. As I- Because you're doing all your own work? As I stress, I've got so many cases to investigate. I'm snowed under for the next 10 years. Yep. But if you'd like to roll the dice and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully get your case seen by me, one of the chief sleuths of the modern times, yep. do send it in hamishandy.com. Not tense. just generic ones off the internet, please, <laughs> specific ones. Uh, and so when Soph emailed this, I said, what are the chances? This is the exact case I've been working on. <laughs> So, I know it's going to sound like she sent it in, yeah. but I promise you, yeah. this, this is just a, a case of going- Do you have any file notes that are dated on the top of yours? <laughs> oh, he's pointing to his head. <laughs> See, I, all I, the notes you have are in there. As soon as I keep notes, so I'll what, get hacked. So, what's the date? As soon as so I keep- what, What's the date in your head? Uh, August 4th, 2013. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, you've had this for, you know- I've been keeping an eye out. Yeah. yeah, I've been certainly not not chasing up leads every day, but it's been an open investigation. Because sure. if I keep digital notes in it to prove that I'm working on things before people send them in, yeah. I will get hacked, and I'll be it'll be ta- they'll steal all my files. And so I got to keep them up. Cops will know what's happening. I got to keep them up top. <laughs> sure. What happened? Um, so I've noticed the same thing I noticed: padding. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, stop pointing to the clock, mate. Justice can never wait. Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes in this, it seg- sometimes in this segment, it may seem like it's dawdling. <laughs> justice, justice has to wait constantly in this segment. <laughs> can't just rip through it. We'll have nothing to talk about. Justice can't be rushed. Speaking, <laughs> speaking, speaking of the- can't just rip through it. Yeah. Interesting. I use that phrase because so I've noticed on some toilet paper, rather than there being perforations mm. every square, mm. sometimes you come across a piece that is almost two pieces long. Yep. And the, they miss a perforation. Mm. She sent through a photo. I've noticed it on a few brands too. Not your top shelf brands, mm. but I've seen it around and I've rolled out a whole roll as well before. And it's a deliberate missing of the perforation. Mm. So we take more than we need. And guess what? Mm. We're back at the supermarket a little bit early to keep buying them. It's, it, it's deliberately there to increase our usage of toilet paper. Now, <laughs> it's just sounds- one square normally. No, but it's like if you go to get three. And you land on that bit, now you're taking four (laughs) or five. You know, you can't can't tear tear it where you want to tear it because they're jumping perforations. They're molding them all together. Imagine toilet roll without any perforations. You'd use the whole roll (laughs) for one poo. (laughs) Now, so obviously they know they can't go that crazy, but they're getting us incrementally. It sounds wild, I know. So I called a source deep within the toilet paper industry. Listen to this incriminating evidence. Now, Frederick... Do you agree that you're implementing this trick on rolls of toilet paper to make customers spend more money? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Jack, obviously that's the end. Why would there be need to be any more evidence? So well, the the guys <laughs> making on making a murder a wish they had that sort of yeah. exonerating evidence. So do the sound effects hey, after to the, the evidence <laughs> gets <laughs> dropped. The new I thought you'd have a closing remark. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need it. The evidence speaks for itself. I talked to a source within the toilet paper industry. <laughs> Talk about that. planting evidence. What's that? I saw you do that. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> 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 Planting evidence. Snitch. Jack. You're off the team. Jack I've got a new just, job at the Manitowoc the- Sheriff's <laughs> County. <laughs> Jack, you're sacked for snitching, and oh, you're, you're sacked for not believing. <laughs> I might look like a rat. It's the day, Jack. Just react to them at the end of the day. Great case. Hayne, you've got three minutes exactly to blow something wide open. No, Ando. Yes, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> because. When do you walk into the High Court of Australia and then go, okay, today we're dealing with one of the most important cases we've ever seen. Oh, hang on, though. We've got to get to the news. So I have to rush it mm. and miss out details. I decided not to answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> in the spirit of speeding this up. And, oh, this is, a, this is a case that I've been working on for a long time. I've finally got enough evidence to prosecute, and you're sitting there mm. as my junior sub-assistant lawyer and mm. not helping me prosecute it. I just want you to prosecute quickly. Well, that's what I do in this segment, because for, for people that haven't heard it before, if, if anyone's trying to pull the wool over our eyes, over our nose, so we can't breathe properly and we won't pay attention, over our mouth, that's a big problem, over our ears, so yep. we can't listen to justice. Yep. If any wool's being pulled over any of our sensory organs, then that 
is what attracts my attention. I suppose we'd, we'd the end of... of... We'd wear wool and mittens if it's cold. Sure. Touch... We'll forgive. <laughs> but if anyone's it's trying to ruin sight, it. smell, ears, or taste. I've been, I've been suckered in because you can't help but believe in the cause. My my <laughs> brain is attached 40. to the other end of the wool. So when it gets pulled, my brain gets alerted. <laughs> and I wake up and I spring into action as I blow something wide open. Stand back! She's set to blow! Look here! is blowing this wide open. Amazing. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. In 80 seconds. And uh, when something's advertised to have a certain amount of pieces, mm. I think we have a gentleman's agreement that th- that needs to be true, i.e. a two-piece feed from KFC. Yeah, you want two pieces. Oh, I want to open that up, and I want, the- I want that to be yeah. a gentleman's agreement that we're all understanding that's a two-piece of chicken feed. Yes. They don't go, oh, the bread roll's a piece, the yep. gravy's a piece, each chip's a piece. Mm. No, it's a two-piece feed. So you can imagine my disgust uh, when Asher writes in and goes, I was looking at a well-known department store. Sorry, this is one that's been sent in by someone, not a case I've prosecuted <laughs> myself. <laughs> that's a surprise. Um, for $10, they're advertising a 62-piece first aid kit. How long have I got? 36 seconds. Yeah, I can do that. They're advertising a 62-piece first aid kit, and for 10 bucks, so she has gone, you know what? I might grab that for the netball clinic that I run. Yeah, I'm making that bit up. But she wanted a first aid kit. So she's gone, I'll grab that. I'll grab that 62-piece first aid kit, only to find out that 50 of the pieces, Andy, 50 of the 62, mm. I'm running it right down to the wire here. Yeah, you got 10 seconds. Were Band-Aids. It was a 50... Band-Aid pack. There's only really 13 pieces in there. It was one pack of 50 Band-Aids. News. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Monday, Ham. It is a Monday, which means I should blow something wide open. But, Ando, permission to jag left for a second. Wow. Yeah. This is not so much a blow wide open as a curious inquisition. Close to a head scratcher? or <laughs> It could be a head scratcher. Because it depends on my recollection of a conversation. So it's a, this is about something that you've said. Okay. And it's about going, how much do you remember it? How much do you want to stick by it? But you remember, you can't blow me wide I'm open. not blowing you wide open. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I just... I object, I'm sustained. <laughs> you've got complete amnesty. Good. You can't be blown wide open. I myself cannot blow myself wide open, yep. nor can I blow Jack wide open. But we blew, blew Jack open once. Yes. Well, that was a that was a more of a warning shot. Okay, okay, <laughs> but um, you've got amnesty now, Jack. If you actually, were... I might remove your amnesty, Jack. Well, I only had it for that five seconds because I didn't know I had it before. Yeah, you're right. We can buy Jack <laughs> yeah, open. Um, for those and who don't we'll... know what this segment is, uh, blow yeah, something yeah. wide open is where Hamish uncovers the truth. Yeah. No matter how deep he has to burrow, he'll come out with the truth. I had a few people actually, um, news dot com. Uh, ran a headline recently that actually was in all caps on mm. the website, blown wide open. Mm. And then it was, you know, a court case or something. A lot of people noticed that and sent it in, yeah. uh, going, yeah. hey, blow open news. news com. Com. <laughs> you for using blown wide open, yep. which I will, which I consider that, <laughs> consider that just a casual, yeah, Jack. <laughs> Consider that me, even even before I. This is like if we were in Top Gun. I'm yeah. walking out to the plane, yeah. and I shot an enemy. <laughs> I'm not even in the plane yet, and I'm down and bad guys. So that's just that's just one off the hip. Yeah. <laughs> just that's good. That's fast good. as you like. I've blown news.com wide open. Yep. But Ando, this just popped into You're my head scared. when we were talking about the dunk contest before. Yes. Now, I can't remember exactly what it is, so I'm not trying to paint you in a bad light here. Mm. Did you say? Mm. Have you said? That you can dunk. (laughs) (laughs) I recall you saying, yeah, I can dunk. I have to have a run up. Like, it's not, you can't bounce, bounce, dunk. You wouldn't do it in in play. Yep. But you can run up and dunk a basketball. (laughs) You have said that. Jack remembers it. I have, but not, no, not a basketball. That was the only thing. What have you dunked? I dunked a softball. So could you dunk a full size basketball? No. Okay. Now, I thought maybe this is you'd back, back in my heyday of my leaping years. But you well. kick. <laughs> I've got an outstanding vertical leap. Well, do you want to have a go at dunking? Because Jack and I both remember you saying to a group of people that you could dunk, but you couldn't bounce it. You could just dunk a softball. Soft, yeah. Do you think you could dunk a softball? No, not anymore. What's Would, the dunking ability? 
Yeah. I mean, maybe if I wore really high shoes, like a little bit. Still. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing. I wanted, there was a part of me going, would you stand by the Duncan claim? <sighs> no, I mean, because I think it was in the forum of a lot of people talking about basketball and you going, oh, look, I, I can dunk, but I don't, I don't like to do it too much. <laughs> <laughs> it had that vibe to it. Then there's two parts to this. Mm-hmm. If I'm challenging past claims, yeah. then the dunking made me remember another one that I never called at the time, but <laughs> has remained a head scratcher. Yeah, I've got a few. <laughs> did you, did <laughs> you, or did you not tell us in your at high school, yeah. everyone in PE had to do a muscle up? And so a muscle up for people that don't know is where you hang under the Roman rings. So you've got to essentially do a chin up and then push the rings down to your waist. And, oh, and yeah, we had to do that for in, in gym. You were like, because we shot a promo in, the, in like London when we were playing yeah. around with Roman rings, and you're like, oh, yeah, I, I did a muscle up. Well, we wouldn't have used the term muscle up. We didn't even call it that. But you, well, had, to, you had to get up to that. To that, like, where, so where the rings are down by your side. Yeah. I don't know. They are very hard to do. <laughs> I don't know if you did do that. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, do you remember that claim? Well, I, I remember. Him I'm going to yeah. stand by that because I remember doing them. Now, whether we were uh, like, I've forgotten that we got assisted to do them, <laughs> but I'm happy to go have a crack at that. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. I just I remember hearing that going. That is like, I feel that's like going to pass to pass PE. We had to like, I don't know, do a hundred kilo deadlift or, so, or <laughs> right, a bench right. press. Like it sounds like it was. A, it just seems to be a very hard mm. thing to do. Would you have a crack at a muscle up? Do you think you've still got it? Because you didn't have any gymnastics training. No, no. But I think we could, like, if if I think we started with the rings like it from a standing start, so you could jump. (laughs) (laughs) So you could jump most of the way up. (laughs) Well, say if it's like, for safety's reason, we're only like when we started the ring, like this far off. So could you do one hanging or do you need the jump to start? Oh, look up. Can we have a go and have a go? I'd love to have a go. Because here's what I'll do. If, if, if you can do a muscle up, yep. which is that, so yeah, you're hanging under the Roman rings and yep. you pull them all up and they end up by your hips. Okay. If you can do one, mm. I'll bake you a cake. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> says Andy is the best at sports forever. On the top. Um, okay. I'll, yeah, let's go have a crack at that. All right. Great. I'm, I'm glad one of the things I remembered, you'll still stand by. Hey, Richard Andy. Ham. Uh oh. Mm. Didn't we forget something on Monday with all the chat of blimps? Yeah. Stand back. She's set to blow. Look out. Fire in the hole. Hamish is blowing this wide open. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. I bet there were a bunch of crooks strutting uh, qu- or swaggering with quite the hip swing this week, thinking I'd forgotten to blow something wide open. Mm. If you've just tuned in uh, for the first time, maybe you're ever welcome, but uh, Hamish Stay. started a segment. We'll play something wide open. Please don't judge the rest of the show or program. Oh, of course. Um, don't. Based I mean, on this. No particular. chance the rest of the show could ever live up to these lofty standards. <laughs> but if you do ever spot any wrongdoings, I mean, I was going to say send them into hamishandandy.com, but don't. I'm snowed under. <laughs> I've got too many, as you can see, I've got so many cases that you, I can't even make my Monday appointment because all my time and headspace is spent investigating cases. It's your quest for justice. You're taking down I burglars. Hate, hate burglars. Thieves. Hate thieves. <laughs> exactly. Rustlers. People They're you no don't good. trust. Yep. Trustlers. People that mess <laughs> um, with my trust. <laughs> and that's the thing. And then, and, and sometimes I take down my own case. Mm. Sometimes people send them in on a real yeah. wing and a prayer because there's absolutely, there's, with so many cases to prosecute, hmm. there's such a low chance I'll get to you if you do send it in. So I, I would actually say as a friend, don't bother. But keep them coming. Keep going. Going. Hand, 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 Crooked hand, cops? Hand. Won't touch them. Won't touch them. Now I'm just saying that to lure one in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll touch him. I'll touch him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll touch him up real rough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I mean, depending on what the situation calls for. Mm. I mean, if they're cool. tough crooked cops, I'll obviously yep. call their superiors. You yep. won't try and fight. Crooked firemen? You don't get them much, do you? <laughs> no. I suppose that's an arsonist, <laughs> but um, not. you would never call that a fireman. Yeah. Um, I suppose a crooked fireman would be a guy that says he was out fighting a fire. <laughs> okay. And then you check up on the house and it's crystal clean. <laughs> but you really don't hear of a lot of crooked firemen. <laughs> Probably up right up there with how much you don't hear about crooked ambos. <laughs> Is that guy's ankle really sprained? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he says it's fine. 
<laughs> I'm a crooked hand, though. <laughs> no, I won't. Um, uh, we're not here to um, to cast aspersions on our excellent emergency service personnel. And I tell you who we are here to cast aspersions on, a pizza bar. Oh. Now, this was not a case I found myself. This is one of the rarities that came in from a tip-off. Really? And I was Most uh, seem to have. As I was from... sifting through my tip-off jar. Yep. Uh, what I'm going to do here is something special. Mm-hmm. 131060, uh, I think we've only ever done this once before. Mm-hmm. I will throw my truth explosives open to the public. Wow. If you would like to blow your own business open or other people's businesses open for committing this same crime because... So only within this crime. It's a category we get a lot. Here's what's happened. Um, Tim's written in. He's going, hey, guys, work at a pizza bar. And recently uh, we got new menu leaflets and sign writing on the front that says now open from 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. just to catch a little bit of that yeah. walking around evening trade. Yeah. However, others that have been at the pizza bar longer than me tell me it's always been open from 4 p.m. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Right. So the old can we can we sell can we grab a bit of the knockoff pizza crowd yeah. because what if people think we're not open till 6:30? We'll say we're now open from 4 p.m. Here's the category: specials that are not special being advertised. Yes. Specials that are not specials or not so specials. He's just advertising no change on the business there. 13, 10, 60. Dodgy specials. Do- specials that aren't special. Yeah. Give us a call if you've got something in that category, something I'll, you've I'll, seen. I'll blow it wide open. Yeah. And you can use the explosives. Full okay. permission to use the explosives. Yeah. 13, 10, 60. Caitlin, tell us a special that wasn't special. Ahoy. Ahoy, Ahoy Caitlin. You. What are you saying? Um, I've worked at a few cafes that have done this, and I know a few other cafes that do it too. Get a regular em. coffee is $3.50, mm. and a cake is normally $6, and they do this special uh, coffee and cake deal for $10. So it's an extra 50 cents to get this deal. I mean, it's special. Oh, Caitlin, blow that wide open. How did, yeah. how, how did it feel using the sound effect, by the way? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's good, isn't it? Made it so much better. Nice feeling. Now that the air is clear of that scandal. Yes. Um, anyone ever pick up on it, Caitlin? Yeah, a few people did, but a lot of people were sucked into it. Yeah. yeah. No one <laughs> no, in the rule book does it say a special's cheaper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Check your prices. Just with your cakes and coffees, everyone. Shades. Shades. Hey, you? mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Mate, awesome name, Shades. <laughs> um, yeah, my parents were, parents were hippies, so uh, <laughs> yeah, nice. it's a bit different. That's no, great. Hey, um, what, have, uh, what have you seen? Yeah, um, so we run a place called The Deck in Shepparton. Hmm. Well, not myself, but... Uh, me and a friend helped with a bit of the marketing, and it's uh, eight dollar fifty pizza and pot from mm-hmm. five thirty to seven thirty on Wednesday and Thursdays. But uh, get ready for the explosion! It's actually on every day, but we only advertise it for Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> oh, just give it a bit of a love to the slow nights, huh? <laughs> yeah. Good, good, Shades. Thanks very yeah, much. Well done, Shades. <laughs> and what up for buying yourself? What up, Andy? Um, what have you seen, mate? That's a special. That's not special. Well, there's a, there's a joint in Caram Downs, or there are a barley furniture joint, and they've been closing down for seven years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, closing down sale. The old slow and, touchdown. Yeah, and, and a mate of mine went in there um, oh, about, about a month or so ago, and he just happened to ask him when they were actually closing down. The guy said, oh, yeah, just when we just finished selling the rest of this, um, rest of this stock. So. Yeah, right. Stop ordering, going, mate. <laughs> I've got to talk to the guy that does our orders. <laughs> I suppose in, in, in essence, every store is closing, closing down. down and no one's going to be open forever. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, wrap this up for us. The explos- Ahoy, lad. Ahoy to you. The Ahoy, explo- explosive devices in your hands. Uh, yes, boys. Um, I, I was working in an aquarium uh, for some time. And we were adver- advertising just the, the common goldfish for $4.50. Mm. Uh, but the multi buy deal was uh, buy five for $25. Um, blown, yeah. blown wide open, blown wide open. And now I, I believe I was the first person to cob onto it. Uh, raised the issue with the boss. He uh, just looked at me and winked and said, I've got a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Blow the boss open as well. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> nice, oh, Charlie. Don't worry, Charlie. Get started to changing it. Now it's $30. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Go on, Stick boss, around, everybody. Now that boss is driving around in a Ferrari with that extra 250 Man. And now it's time. It's time to prosecute some near do wells. Yes. For people who don't know what that is. It's an old timey <laughs> way of saying people that never do well. Yeah. Uh, some real baddies out there. Yeah. Um, people that walk amongst us can blend into the population. Mm. Um, but are, in fact, 
scum of the earth. Mm. People trying to rip us off and that need to be blown wide open. People trying to pull the wool knowingly over our eyes. Yep. I'll, I'll accept an accidental wool pull. Yep. If you trip over and your watch gets snagged on my beanie and the wool comes down <laughs> over my eyes... And you undo it and you pull the wool back over my eyes and say, sorry, mate, I didn't mean that. Yeah, it was an um, accidental watch. That wool was pull. an accidental wool pull. Yeah. I'll completely forgive you. But if you're deliberately pulling the wool over people's eyes. If I know for a fact you put a log in the way yeah. so you could trip, fall on me, pull the wool over my eyes yeah. and then tuck it into my shirt so the wool stayed there. That's when I get angry. Villains beware. Super villains. Cyber villains. Cyber villains I won't. Yep. I'm, I'm nervous about. <laughs> <laughs> I won't anger a cyber villain. <laughs> but this is the segment where you All right, do... I would. I mean, if it needs me, if a case comes across my yeah, desk I so. or I, I find so. a cyber crime to yeah. prosecute, I've never actually had a cyber crime mm. for, to blow something wide open. This is not a cyber crime. It's a physical crime. It's a product-based crime. Mm. But still pretty much as bad as cyber terrorism. Stand back! She's set to blow! <gasps> Look out! Fire in the hole! Hamish is blowing this... Wide open! Amazing! Amazing! He's done it again! Oh, what a great guy. Alright, and I was cruising around mm. in my Truth Eagle, uh, looking for cases to prosecute. Because uh, whilst I do have an absolutely enormous stack on my desk, an inconceivable amount of files. Mm, so okay, don't, don't cruise on your eagle then. Well, I mean... Get down there and start working through them. No offence to the people that send in these cases to be blown wide open, but sometimes it requires me, mm. as an experienced investigator, mm. to find the cases as well, because maybe I can find cases that other people couldn't. Mm. Um, not saying don't send them in. Send them in. Um, not generic ones. has to be specific to you. But I don't need them. Yep. Absolutely. I, in fact, I can't handle them. Yeah. Please don't send them in. in. But, you know, if you have to, do. Yep. Please do. So I'm cruising around with my eagle. So just out of interest, has this one come in from someone or did you get this one yourself? Well, I'm telling you the story. Yeah. I was cruising on the eagle. Yeah. My phone beeps. Yeah. Someone's and, going in. And I was like, well, I've got to land the eagle responsibly because I'm not going to look at my phone while I'm on the eagle. I look, someone has sent one in. <laughs> so I go, you know what? Yeah. I, will do, I will just I, look at this one. As a, as a goodwill gesture to the people, mm. why don't I prosecute one that's been sent in? Yeah, for the 25th week in a row. <laughs> no, why no, don't no. We do that? I like to be fair. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's fair. This comes in from Zach. Zach has said, hey, Hamish, you know you're pretty much covered in paperwork for your Blow Something Wide Open segment. Tell me about it, Zach. I've got one for the pile, mate. So Zach has gone out shopping to buy some anchovies. Okay. Now, I'm not an anchovy guy. Maybe you're not an anchovy no. guy. I do know they're not cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been happy, very, very comfortable with my fact that I don't like anchovies because that's, I don't know, 10 bucks that oh, we're wait. saving. <laughs> If you're a heavy user of anchovies, yeah, you're probably costing week. yourself 10 bucks a week. So naturally, when you're shopping for anchovies, I know they come in little jars. You mm-hmm. see them in the supermarket. Zach picks up the jars and he's looking through the jars going, I want the one, since I'm spending all this money on chovies, I want the most chovy per dollar. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to buy yeah. a jar. Because some of the jars, he's like, you can, there's barely a few, any anchovies in there. Yep. He picks up this jar packed with anchovies. Like you couldn't, if you'll excuse the term, like sardines okay. in an anchovy jar. It's a confusing analogy. Yeah. But he goes, well, this is the one for me. It's about the same price as all the others. But it's full. Seemingly has about 20 times the amount of anchovies in it. Happy as you can imagine. He's yeah. giddy on top of the world. Goes to the checkout, pays for it, comes home, undoes the jar and starts making, you know, anchovy yeah. salad or yeah. pasta or whatever. <laughs> Opens the jar. The anchovies have been deliberately stuck to the outside of the jar. <laughs> Around the whole jar. The center of the jar is cavernous. Scam chovies. What brand? He didn't say. <laughs> just, you know. Just be aware. Look shake, out. Look shake, at, shake just, your jars. Just, just be aware of densely packed jars. Shaky jars is shake probably jars. the community <laughs> service announcement here. <laughs> we're gonna, that night at dinner. We're going to blow something wide open, everybody. Oh, yeah. Up after this, Ham. You've got one in the barrel? Big time, mate. Which one will I pick? Probably the only one you've got. Ham, <laughs> <laughs> fat cats, fatter cats, you're after them. If they're doing the wrong thing, um, criminals you're after. You bet. Whistleblowers? Nope. Appreciate those guys. Okay, but so you, you like snitches. You are a giant snitch on this. No, thing. I'm a law enforcement. <laughs> Whoa, my friend. That was a snitch on me, and snitches get snitches. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get... I'm not you... a snitch, mate. I'm a, I'm a truth seeker. Yeah, so then what if someone's snitching on someone 
Well, like, let, let, let like me this be, case. All right. Case. So you want the guys I'm about to expose in this case. Let me get this straight, Andy Lee, if yeah. I may. You want these guys to keep doing what they're doing? Is that what you want? No. I don't think so. Because <laughs> I'm about to expose some fat cats here. So if you're saying, hey, don't blow the whistle on fat cats, man. Yep. Keep li- keep lots of dine and other cat food around for us fat cats. We want to keep eating so it. So where do you sit on snitches? What, do you, what am I blowing open, though? If someone's snitching too much and they're... Uh... <laughs> Your whole segment relies on snitches. I, re- I rely on truth seekers. Okay. And if that, if that is a tip-off, yeah. thank you. But this is not unnecessary snitching. Yep. These are people that come forward. Truth comrades. Usually a great risk to themselves yep. to throw me riding around on my truth eagle a bone. Okay. And the great thing about eagles is they don't eat bones, so we're able to prosecute those bones. <laughs> that is what this segment is, Ando. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to ever I mean, I don't want to discourage people dubbing people in. Um, but having said that, I do most of the cases myself, so I don't need tip offs anyway. Did this one come from a tip off? It did, yeah. <laughs> it did actually. <laughs> Hamishnandy.com. Is where yep. the hopeful many go, but I've got thousands of cases, guys. Sure. So I, I do not need fresh cases, despite the fact that this looks like that I am using a fresh case. Yep. And I need them, don't want them, can't fit them in my inbox. But do send them in. Do send them in, hamishandy.com. <laughs> not generic ones, has to have happened to you. Stand back! She's set to blow! <gasps> Look here! Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. And, uh, yep. Here is uh, a case sent in by Truth Sleuth Mike Wilson. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a New Zealand case. We international. Like international crime being. But luckily, my jurisdiction is global. Yes. So, phew. Is it the kind of crime that may spread into other countries, so it's better to stamp it out within an an isolated area? Yeah, I definitely get the feeling that the syndicate uh, perpetrating this crime is using New Zealand as a testing ground to see if they could then hit mainland Australia and Tasmania. Um, Mike, uh, he works in, he works in Auckland. Yep. I don't think I'm being, not giving anything away there. I'll try and protect the company here because I don't, last thing I want is for my, my truth sleuth to get sacked. He goes, we've got two offices. One office is for corporate bigwigs. The second office is for the minions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so this is, so you got fat cats up one end, yep. skinny cats down the other. The offices are no more than 10k apart. Mm-hmm. And I think he includes that to go, look, we're kind of roughly in the same suburb, but we're there or thereabouts. Both offices have exactly the same vending machine run by exactly the same company with exactly the same products inside them. Mike yep. bounces from office to office. He is the theme cat, but he has to go and visit the fat cats from time to time. Probably an aspiring fat cat, though. Ah, uh, I think he goes up there to hopefully impress the fat cats. But fat cats, <laughs> they don't let any more cats in yep. in their club. That's why they're fat cats. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The vending machine at the office, which has the, the worker bees, the skinny cats, and the little people... Mm is 20 cents more expensive on every item mm-hmm. than the exact same vending machine at the Fat Cats offices, allowing the rich to get richer, squashing the little man, squashing the skinny cats by charging them more for the chocolates and milk and mice and whatever else is in that vending machine. Wow. He ends with, please help us, Hamish. Well, I have, Mike. We haven't, you haven't named any. <laughs> like, he doesn't name them. <laughs> but, geez, I reckon if you were a fat cat at that office listening online now okay. in Auckland, you go, well, geez, we fit that bill. <laughs> Close up. <laughs> Close up shop. Start giving all the 20 cents back to the skinny cats. Aim, you gave the burglars, the housebreakers, the shoplifters yep. a week off, essentially. I week. gave crime a week off. Mm. Um, but that's a tactic that a lot of law enforcement will use. To um, get them out. Can you go out? quiet. Yep. You lay low. Um, criminals and bandits will start doing their thing again, and then it gives you a good chance to observe them and come back with even more vengeance um, <laughs> yeah. when you resume work. That's if like you, cops will you... often just take a spontaneous week off. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, this is a segment where Hamish goes after pilferers, mm-hmm. highwaymen. Just where do you stand? Yeah, yeah, I hate them. Um, but just <laughs> sc- just scammers and and swindlers of a- any any you know genre. Yep. Crooks. Actually, as we, you know, usually discover during this preamble, sometimes I'll let people off. (laughs) But today, Ando, Mm -hmm. this is an organisation and a group of people that have tried to dupe the country. Wow. Not just any country, but Australia. My favourite bloody country. Wow. So now you've got my attention. 
Treasonists. Yep. Treasos. <laughs> Hit it, Jack. Stand back! She's set to blow! <gasps> Look out! Fire in the hole! Hamish is blowing this wide open! Amazing. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. Now, Ando, <clears throat> when I blow something wide open, usually it's cases that I've seen and mm. I'm choosing to prosecute on my own time. Yep. Um, I am snowed under with cases. I observe too many transgressions to prosecute effectively all. prosecute yep. one, one a week. That's why my desk is absolutely piled up. Mm. From time to time, I'll also, because this is a service for the people, I have a look at the emails. Yep. But I really do it completely arbitrarily and more of, more of a token gesture to the listeners of the show because yeah. I don't have time to take on their cases as well. Incidentally, this one's probably from one of them. Well, interestingly you, enough, <laughs> you bring that up yeah. because as I was looking at the cases, so keep them coming in, hamishandy.com. But you don't need them. Don't need, definitely don't need yeah. them, but, but keep them coming. because use them every time. Well, year. keep them coming in. Mm-hmm. If you want, if it makes you feel better, yeah. send them in. Yep. If it gets help. If it helps you get something off your, your chest, chest. Yep. maybe it'll feel like you've done something, but you don't get your hopes up because there's, you know, I'm usually just prosecuting my own cases, yep. but this is a success story. When's the last you time you've done up. one of your own? I usually do. one. If you heard what I said before, as I said, <laughs> I usually do my own. This got my attention though. Okay. From a young truth seeker named Lucy. Mm-hmm. And, and it's directed at the writers and producers of Home and Away, uh, one of Australia's most loved soap operas. Wow. And I'd always knew that there was a rat to be smelt with Home and Away, mm-hmm. and I wanted to bring him down, but I was always, I just didn't have the burden of proof. Yep. And as you know, I do not wage war lightly on this segment. Like, I won't wade into battle half cocked. No. Full cocked or nothing yep. is the hat that I wear yep. when I'm investigating. <laughs> uh, and the t shirt I wear whilst it I'm investigating. It doesn't read well of you. <laughs> people, it raises some eyebrows when people come into the office and I have my full cocked or nothing <laughs> hat on. But what I mean is I'm just not going to go off half cocked. Okay. I've got to have all the evidence. And the reason I've struggled to get enough evidence on Home and Away is I don't watch it and never have. <laughs> so. so so I, I always struggled yeah, to yeah. sink my claws into him, even yeah. though I knew something was there. Yeah. And that's every why time I, you tried to sit down, something stopped you. <laughs> something <laughs> that going, taste. That's <laughs> why my eyes lit up when Lucy uh, alerted me yeah. to this. And I went, yep, good. I got him. I've got him yeah. dead to rights <laughs> good, here. Good. Said, hey, Haim, I know you probably won't get to this. Too true, Lucy. In fact, not true. You're a shining example of mm. that dreams do come true. And sometimes I do get to one that's sent in. Um I've been angry about this for about ten years now. Wow! So she's thought about it too. She's not going off. She's she's not going off half cocked. No. Please blow up wide open the home and away writers. Now she just requests the writers, but I'm going to blow open the producer, yep. the director, mm-hmm. and Channel Seven as a network actors. for allowing this to happen on their watch. Actors, yep, actors for not walking off set. Wow! Everyone so involved. Peacock, Steve Peacock. Peacock. I'm looking at you, even though she's new to it. <laughs> yep. Everybody involved in this yep. uh, has to bear some level of responsibility. Again, I'm just basing this off Lucy, though. This is yeah. her work. Because, <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I would I didn't have time to go back and watch every episode of Home and Away before I presented this case. Mm. I was a huge follower of the show in my younger years. Every year they leave the show on a cliffhanger. That's not a crime. That's just good TV. Uh, one year, some, that's me adding that. Mm. One year, Summer Bay had a terrible landslide, mm. and a twin was trapped inside the landslide. Her other twin telepathically knew she was in there and went to her rescue, which is fine. Again, mm. that's not a crime. That's just great TV writing. Yeah. However, a few le- years later on the show, a big twist comes out. They're not really twins. They got swapped at birth. Mm. So she goes, well, hang on a sec. How could she be telepathically connected <laughs> yeah, yeah. to someone that's not her twin? This has frustrated me. Um, perhaps they thought people, this is back to Lucy's email. Yeah. Perhaps they thought people were only going to go through a phase of the show and the new followers would be none the wiser. Let's just say that for me, this has stuck with me for 10 years yep. and I can't get over it. Let me know if you want more info. I should have emailed it back. <laughs> <laughs> I probably could have used more info, like the names of the twins and stuff like that. But I think essentially what oh, she's saying em. there is that's just no, sloppy, yep. sloppy twin-based plot lining. Wouldn't bother tuning into ten or seven tonight. It's probably not on. Well, I've lost your faith. Well, no, it's, it's probably not on. It's I reckon probably, they... was, was it due to start in about an hour? Yep. And, no, cancelled. <laughs> And I would, and if I'm allowed, yeah. if Channel 7 would let me write up the little message that I have at the start of the set, you know, mm. thanks for watching Home and Away for the last 25 years. Mm. We've been pulled off the air because a young girl called Lucy, mm. using an avenue that's available to all citizens, mm. um, exposed us for the fraudsters we are. Mm. We, you know, we're off. PML is out of a job. <laughs> like, we're all sacking everyone. Thanks for your time. It's been fun. 
Um, if you have any more blow wide opens, send them to hamishnady.com. He doesn't them. need them, but send them in. Non generic. <laughs> Just not generic ones that you've seen off the internet. It has to have happened to you. Thanks for your email, Liz. <laughs> it's Hamish Nady. Hey, this is the segment where you blow something wide open. This is the segment where crooks and villains yep. quake. Shady characters uh, are worried. People that are hide in the shadows I'd, I'd, I'd hide be, in the shade. I'd be interested. <laughs> oh, no, but having said that, we won't blow open people for being sun smart. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. The shadow seekers, I'll get because you know why are you in the shadows. Why? Why didn't you want us to see your face? Yeah. Shade seekers, I will applaud. But shady characters, shady characters, no. <laughs> unless you're providing shade for redheads and other people that are s- super susceptible to the sun's rays, like myself, pale yep. skin folk, and. Uh, you know, I'd be interested to see a a bit of... And in this world of big data, I mean, mm. this could be easy to do. You map out when this segment goes live, like mm. right now on across the country yep. on the radio, and you also get the corresponding data from online booking. Like, let's say Jetstar. Mm-hmm. And they go, okay, people trying to... I don't think Jetstar flies to the Cayman Islands, mm. but people trying to book tickets to... Get out of to countries and areas we don't have an extradition agreement with because yep. probably crooks and those shady characters mm. pre-booking like mm. already getting it ready to go and then when they hear that i'm not prosecuting them they cancel the order yeah, <laughs> yeah i reckon there'd be fifty thousand searches happening right now well, for get me out of here because they're worried you're going to come down and come down hard but i don't think today's target will be booking a ticket out of the country and because today's target's still at school today's a bit of a special blow something wide open what? because i'm scaring someone straight <laughs> <laughs> so we're not blowing anyone wide open. Today. I am going to blow them wide open, yeah. but they're so young that I think they'll be able to gather themselves up and and recoup. Right now, I was in the middle of investigating one of my own cases this yep. week. I'll give you a clue. It had something to do with vacuum cleaners. Okay, but what, what was? It? I meant to try and guess it. <laughs> no, no, no. That's more just so you go. Oh, he's doing his own give me cases. A taste. Okay. Now, as I <laughs> as I was investigating that yep. case, so we'll have the vacuum cleaners next week <laughs> if there's enough evidence. Because <laughs> I don't go off half cocked. Oh, I wait till I'm about ninety percent cocked. You've gone off less cocked. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I'm fully cocked today. Yeah. So this yeah. this email hit, and but in my office, mm. um, I just hear ding 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 yeah. all the time. But I should turn that sound effect off because yeah. I get so many cases yeah, from people. Here. There's Statistically, there's no chance I'll look at your case. So you don't need, don't send. Oh no, keep them coming in. <laughs> Hamishnady.com. <laughs> Couldn't hurt. Yeah. For tradition. For tradition. For the tradition yeah. of emailing, keep yeah. them coming if you've got them. But again, don't get your hopes up. However, mm. someone that's lucky is a young lady called Caitlin, who. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Jack, <laughs> go for it. Yep. Stand back. <laughs> She's set to blow. Look out! Fire in the hole. Hamish is blowing this wide open. Amazing. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. Hamish Blake uh, scares someone straight. Okay. I'm going to blow this young lady up and I'm going to change her name to protect her. But Caitlin has dobbed her in. Um, she goes, hey, Ham, this is for you to blow wide open. A few days ago, had my cross country at school. Mm-hmm. We have a new girl in our grade this year and she ran in cross country. I'm just going to call her Fiona. Mm-hmm. Okay. She was really, really good for the first lap. That's the lap that's on the oval yes. that everyone can see. I remember that well. That was also the lap that I tried my best at, although I was I was out of the peloton yep. uh, by the time everyone, was, <laughs> yeah. everyone had done the 500 metres around the oval. So she ran extraordinarily well on that lap. And then when they veered off and started doing the rest of the cross country, the bush, she, yeah. yeah, she did horribly. Caitlin said, I was the only one to stop, gave up my place in the cross country and help her when she felt sick as soon as she'd finished the first lap and was out of sight of everyone. Everyone who watched the oval part thinks she's amazing. Mm-hmm. And she's been telling everyone the only reason she stopped was because she thought she was in the wrong age group. <laughs> <laughs> she's gone, oh, hang on a sec. Yeah. Is this the year eights? Yeah. It is the year eights. Is it oh. really? I'm just going to sit down here and you guys check. I would hate to be a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everyone, she was leading, obviously, coming yeah. off the oval, and everyone's like, how's this new girl? Yeah. Like, you know, we're on, we're on here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so she said, look, even though the grade leader said it was a mistake, they're putting her in the district team. I'm the only one who knows she stopped because she couldn't run. Please expose her. It's been weighing on my conscience too much. All right. So... Well, you're not exposing because you're not using her name. I'm exposing her if she knows who she is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that she's been blown wide open. Yep. 
Oh, uh, but maybe a uh, a teacher or whoever's in charge of picking the district frogs. Uh, okay, squad. hang on a hang sec. A that rings a bell. We did have a girl that was leading yeah. the yeah. whole time around the oval that yeah. we think is so good, yeah. and we're just giving her a district spot based on that. The reason I'm scaring her straight is mm. sports lies mm. can bite you. Mm. I just want to tell her from a man that made a few claims growing up, mm. a few sports lies, you sometimes forget you've made sports lies, yep. and people have the wrong idea of what you're capable of sports yeah. wise yeah <laughs> sports lies are the enemy of sports, sports wise. wise yes um and i remember I... when jack told us he could play cricket <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to name names <laughs> i was using myself as a metaphor really for jack but yeah jack that was the worst night of your life when you came to play indoor cricket with us wasn't it i thought i could for some reason yeah. and, and this girl thinks she can run cross country <laughs> you both can't so don't try no enjoy sports at all levels <laughs> <laughs> Deja Just Deja don't lie about it, Jake. Deja Vu Because next. Pez will kill you <laughs> like he tried to that night. He almost cost us a loss. Lucky Bay hit that six. Anyway, we've said too much. <laughs> Blowing something wide open coming up, Oh, Pam. yeah, definitely. All, yep. all ready. You ready to go? 100%. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Same as Danny, driving you home. And we're laughing the laugh of the truly free because yes. we know the world is a better place, or at least it's about to be, because I'm about to blow something wide open, mm. Ando. Mm. This is where I fly around in my truth eagle, shining justice lasers on people that absolutely bloody hate having justice lasers shown yep. upon them. And those people are people, they're deceivers, mm. and they're naysayers and sometimes just what face scrunchers. Okay, what about deserters? I Not people that make desserts. No, that's uh, patisserie chefs. Yep. Um, Deserters. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and look, if you didn't have a good reason, <laughs> I'm not. Look, I'm not as angry at deserters from ye olde times, yep. where I was like, I'm not fighting for this king. <laughs> this is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is just certain. But modern day, deserters. modern day deserters. I think we should right. curb that. Okay. Watch I out. Think these, watch out, modern day deserters. <laughs> I think these days we've got a much. You know, the heads of the upper echelon are screwed on a lot better yep. than back in the days when it was just like, hey, everyone run into certain death. Well, to continue with the time travelling thing. Because that's why you desert back in if the you day. Loaf of I'm bread. not saying do it. Crooks um, lo- uh, rob- robbing for a loaf of bread for your family. Back um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blow them wide open. If I was blowing something wide open for Queen Victoria back in First Fleet days mm. and she said, what have you got for me? And even if I knew about some bread thieves, because yep. times were tough in London, I'd just say, look, um, Vic, nothing today. <laughs> and I'd take the heat. I'd take the heat for the bread thieves. But Endo, so that gives you an idea of the type of guy you are on this truth crusade. So, you know, I'm only bringing down people that deserve it. And I was actually in the middle of prosecuting one of my own cases. If you've heard the segment before, it's sort of about a 50-50 split between cases I will find yep. and go and prosecute and then yep. tip-offs because I'm a one-man crime-fighting unit. You used to say it was 80-20 in your favour. <laughs> I would say it's 99. It's probably about 80. It is actually about 80-20. It'd, it'd be 99 Yep. In uh, favour of the public we go. putting them forward. Here we go. Well, while you're up in the grandstands, Ando, just eating hot dogs and booing, mm. I'm actually down on the field playing. I can actually I'm see. I'm in the arena. Hey, mate, I'm up on the grandstand and I'm watching you and you're doing nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only man in the arena <laughs> yeah. doing the hard stuff, actually investigating these crimes. Okay. So, I know you always think that these come in as tip-offs. I was in the process of gathering evidence. I was actually, there was a blessing wide open I wanted to do it. I was at a pet store. Because okay. there was a scam going down there that I can't actually say on air because I don't have the full evidence. Oh. I, was, I had the guy handcuffed. I'm putting him in the car. I get an email. Yeah. It gets my attention. Now, Hang on. unprofessional <laughs> of me. <laughs> you didn't have enough evidence, but you had him handcuffed. <laughs> you put him in the car. <laughs> <Don't worry>. so, <laughs> we're going to sort it out later. Okay. I was confident the, confident the evidence comes through. Now, I got an email. <laughs> unprofessional from me. And I'm, jeez, I've just remembered I left that guy there handcuffed. <laughs> uh, I looked at my phone during the, the arrest yeah. and I went, this is a good one. So I dropped the guy yeah. and I sprinted yeah. back here to lucky. start investigating this. And I said, you'll keep. Yeah. <laughs> he might not have, though, because okay. his hands were cuffed behind his back. All right. And that was a few days ago. This comes in from Graham oh, McClellan. Second week in a wall. Stop. Look out. Fire in the hole. Hamish is blowing this wide open. Amazing. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. Second wait. week in a row, you've forgotten your We'll wait for the cue, Jack. Wait for the cue. What's the cue? No, nah, fair enough. I had forgotten. That <laughs> <laughs> no, was a great app. No, good to hear it. And uh, Graham McPlatypus uh, is giving me a tip off here. Okay. He said, look, there's no way you've got time to cover this lead, but feel free to add it to your overflowing inbox. Maybe one day, Sarge and the commissioner will get off your back long enough 
to let you tackle the growing caseload brought in by vigilant truth seekers like myself. So he understands, but Platypus understands what I'm going through every single damn day as I'm looking at this massive pile of cases that yeah. I'm trying to deal with. Yeah. He gets it, he and he was lies. lucky. He was lucky to sneak through. Mm-hmm. Okay, to be honest, he was lucky to get my attention in that moment. Okay. So, as we always say, I'm absolutely flooded. The levee is about to break. Mm-hmm. Don't send any more in. Do not send any more. Blow something wide opens in. If you have to, though, hamishane.com. Keep him coming in. Thanks. <laughs> here's what here's what my platypus has said. Yeah. Milo has brought out a bunch of new. Flavors, oh yeah, and new additions, which seems to be all the range. Hang on. We had we we're talking Milo, barbecue shapes. Milo last week. is Milo. Well, but that Milo so barbecue sports. shapes made sense because they already mm. had different flavors. Hear me out. Okay. Sports edition, Olympic edition, mm. and now Milo original. Okay, right. So they're being marketed on the shelves like here's all these new editions. McPlatypus has gone. What's this? Mm. He opens them up. It's all just the same Milo. Right. Well, what is the difference? There's no, there's no difference. I know, but well, so just the packaging. It was just the packaging. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, that's... First, I was angry. Yeah. This seems like a scam. Yeah. Then I thought about it. And he does write on. He includes some small print in his case. There's no difference in there, but nor should there be, because Milo's delicious just as it, as it is. Yeah. Please never change Milo. <laughs> so then I go... Now I wonder to myself, should I have blown them open? Well, you have. Could you have wondered that before we started this and saved six minutes? <laughs> Which is why I've decided to do this. Stand back! She's set to blow! Look out! Fire in the hole! Amish is blowing this back together! Amazing! He's done it again! Oh, what a great guy. He knew the right thing to do. For the first time ever, <laughs> I'm giving him a pass. A black hole. I've blown <laughs> it open. it all back in together. Sucking it back together. <laughs> Milo, keep walking. You can leave the station. You're not under arrest. <laughs> you better go back to that guy you had handcuffed. <laughs> he was the real crook. <laughs> hey, you didn't blow something wide open yesterday. Forgot to. No, <laughs> that's, not, that's not true. We ran out of time. I have to take your first answer. <laughs> and the cases, cases are sort of piling up at the moment. And um, that's why, I mean, every Sherlock Holmes needs his Watson. Good luck, mate. It's pretty hard. And I don't want to go off half-cocked here, so I've actually done some research. But I'm going to leave the bomb in your hands. If you think it's worth blowing one open, you give Jack the nod. Okay, Ned, well, do you want my Hamish blowing this wide open, or have you got it? No, no. Andy's no. blowing this wide open. No, I wasn't sure whether it is a blow something wide open, so I'd hate to do the, the, okay. the opener and then... Smart. Because for people that haven't heard the segment before, this is where we uncover hmm. modern-day scams, cons, and dupes. Usually by yep. Big Pharma. Doesn't yep. have to be. Yep. Um, <laughs> in fact, so- sometimes it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's where we're not, we're never, never, never scared mm. to lay down explosives on a case or on a cover up, explode it, exposing the ugly truth b- below in the hope that a healing process can and will take place. Like uh, there's a survey, you know, I always look at the really the classic case is that survey with all the managers' specials, um, where it was, you know, nothing, uh, I think it was nothing over a dollar. Mm. Everything was 99 cents. Yeah. And I mean, come on, just <laughs> stop. Ripping off the people. Hey, I'm going after Network 10. Okay. Channel 10. Yep. Like we said, we're um, never scared. Never, 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 never scared. No one, no one too big. No or one too, too big. Or too small, because it's Grant Denyer involved. Good. Okay. Family Feud, Sunday night. It's uh, It's obviously gets to the final round, and there's a guy called Pete playing. Okay. And Pete says he's very good at playing Family Feud at home. He always gets the top answer. Careful, Pete. (laughs) You're setting yourself a pretty high bar. Yep. Right? And he fell short on $10,000 by 12 points. Okay. So he got... It was a tight match. Yep. I just wanted you to have a quick listen to what his answers were and then what the top answer was. Gotcha. And there was a 23-plus point differential between his answer and the top answer. Jeez, okay. Okay. Never hear the first one. Name something bad losers do, you said. Get angry. Mm. Survey says. Seven points in it. Throw tantrums was the highest we had surveyed. Oh. <laughs> okay. Get angry, seven points. Throw tantrums, 30 plus points. And that would have been the, the difference. The word tantrum is a noun. And it's 
to throw uncontrolled outburst of anger. And this is off the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> research. Yeah, research. Sorry, yep. Yeah. It, so it means to be angry. <laughs> yeah. So he's just given an explanation <laughs> of the noun. Yeah. What's something you'd find at a table, uh, some sort of sitting platform? No. Chair. chair. Well, <laughs> hang on. I've actually explained to you what a chair is, just because I didn't specifically say chair. I'd let Grant get away with one of those, Pam. But um, as Casey points out, because she's in a lot of the info here. Yep. Listen to, listen to this one. Okay. Name a place you hope will not be busy, you said. The supermarket. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The survey says... Shocks was the top answer. Bank was the second highest. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Supermarket was He's... worth seven. Shops was worth thirty plus. Again. Yeah. So this is again the in difference. the same round. It's. I mean, Grant. By your own rules, you often say to people you want specifics because yeah. it can't just be like name somewhere you want to go, a uh, good place. Yeah. Oh well, <laughs> we had Hawaii. Yeah, that's, that's a good, a good place. place. Yeah. You can't be general. Yeah. Shops. Is extremely general. general. Earth. Yeah. Earth is very busy, <laughs> but you wouldn't have accepted Earth, would you, Grant, you bloody stickler? So, do we hop back? <laughs> Don't want to see it again, Fair with you. You've been warned. Change your act immediately, <laughs> which means for the episodes airing in November, December. Maybe you should, Andy. Hey, it's been some time since we've had one. Because yeah, because I well, I mean, we're about to blow something wide open, guys. Yeah, and when you ask anyone that deal that works in demolition, Ando, yep, you ask anyone, okay, do you muck around with the explosives? <laughs> They'll say yeah. that yes, yeah, sometimes, you do. <laughs> but you're not meant to. <laughs> and that's the same with me. When I blow something wide open, when I find yep. a case, a situation that I think smells a little fishy, mm. smells like it's a little bit ratty, and needs. Me and my truth eagle to shine justice mm. lasers on it. They just blow it open. They just carelessly throw mm. truth dynamite on it and blow it open. I wait. Yep. I do stakeouts if necessary. Yep. If necessary. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't done one yet, but <laughs> so I guess that one hasn't been necessary. If, if necessary, <laughs> that's the links I'll go to. And bear in mind, <laughs> yes, there wasn't one last week. Well, because week some, well, we're on holidays, mate. Week so, before that, week before that. And I don't think we did one in a week, <laughs> like the final week. Didn't do it on the cruise either. So sometimes six weeks. I, Six ask, weeks? ask any fisherman. Yep. Seven weeks. Do you have, as soon as you put a hook in the water, do you get a fish? No, you don't. Yeah. But Sometimes you keep you can carrying have, on about how so, many cases you've so, got and I you do. can't get to all of them. I do. So and why wait seven weeks? Because I'm, try, I'm, I'm a classic overachiever. And I've, <laughs> 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 and I've got yeah. so many cases on yeah. the go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's madness. It's yeah. like, it, you know, it's like the Master Chef kitchen yes. with 10 meals going yeah. at once, and yeah. I'm one chef. Yeah. I'm running over everything sort of. That, oh, I God, know. That's burnt now. I can't do that by, case. By the, by the end of the show on Master Chef, they've normally got one thing to show for it. It's been Not eight, when there's one chef doing 10 weeks. dishes. <laughs> okay. Now, if you just calm down for yeah. a sec, tighten your cravat. Nine weeks. I've got one. I do finally have a case to present to you <laughs> for something. That got my goat, and for some time now I've been uh, I've been chasing this, and I think I've got the evidence needed to blow it wide open. Stand back! She's set to blow! Look out! Fire in the hole! Hamish is blowing this wide open! Amazing! Amazing! He's done it again! Oh, what a great guy. Now, Ando, mm. I should, I should, in a perfect world, a... Ad- give my attention to all sorts of cases. Yep. But when I find a case that deals with hot chips, yep. which is a situation that's pretty close to my heart, yep. one, you know, about as close as the stomach is to the heart, <laughs> I, of course it's going to get my attention. Yeah. Now, maybe that makes me a bad policeman no. because I'm that's just fine. chasing my gut here. Yep. But this is something that absolutely shocked me to the core. You're allowed to do that. I mean, you, well, Die Hard with a Vengeance, I think they realised that Samuel L. Jackson's kids were at the actual uh, hot pot primary school, so they made the Jump school. in now and quickly tear, I haven't seen it. <laughs> So not that I care about spoilers, but it sounds like you're doing a lot of specific references and I don't understand the analogy. Is he a good guy or a bad guy? He's a good guy. All they're saying is they do, they do, the police protect the primary school more because... Yeah, but isn't that just protecting children? <laughs> I'm not saying... Like, I doubt there was a, there was a toss-up between getting guys for littering or protecting children. <laughs> yeah. No, the point was they had, they could have been any primary school. <laughs> Well, I can't I go into. Well, I, I can't haven't go seen into, it, but it sounds yeah. to me like I can't they go, went to the primary school to protect the kids because the kids are under threat. 
Yeah, don't worry about it. It's such a... <laughs> the, the, Sorry, do you know what? Put a cork in that. I'll watch it tonight. Uh, I probably won't, but I'll come back watch to you it. when I've seen it. Watch it. Yep. And give Mate, us, this, and trust give us, me, this suits me it, because and, I'm enjoying the paddock. <laughs> watch it yep. and, and give us a movie in a minute, even though I've already seen it. But for everyone who hasn't seen it, we haven't, you haven't done a movie in a minute for a while. I suppose that's true. It's true. I've got all this backlog, <laughs> backlog of old segments. Here's the thing, though. This yeah. is about hot chips. Yep. And um, not Samuel Jackson. Very much like Samuel Jackson, if you've seen Die Hard with a Vengeance, and the choices he makes in relation to a primary school. And uh, this comes in from a young man, yeah. a young man called Josh. Yeah. And he goes, at my local chicken shop... They sell hot chips. Yes. No surprises there. No. The size is Chicken a small, small, medium, and large. Yeah. Still no surprise. I'm reading this guy. I've got so many cases to prosecute. <laughs> what are you telling me here, mate? <laughs> I'm so busy. <laughs> so, but I read off because I yeah. smell. I smell yeah. maybe yeah. a lead. And you panic. For the small size... They use a paper bag to put the chips in. That's usual. Mm. Um, you do find a lot of chicken shops, yep. actually. Yep. You know the tight bags? Yeah. I, I hate, okay, come on. I hate a tight bag. Yep. <laughs> Sidetracked. For the medium size, they use a cardboard box. Mm -hmm. That's normal. With a lid that folds over the box. We know the type. For the large size, they use the same box, the same lid, and it's the exact same size as the medium. Mm. They, do not fill the, the they do not fill the large box with any more chips than they do the medium. The worst part about this is they charge two bucks more for the large size, and, mm. and unaware customers are falling for this trick all the time. Now, I read that and I went, I don't know. Yep. You know, maybe to the naked eye, it looks like mm. there's less chips, the same amount of chips, but maybe they know when they do a medium, just fill it up, you know, yeah. nearly full, and then for a large, really jam pack it. So I was like, I, I can't, I can't go forth. Yeah. I can't prosecute on this evidence. So I rang Josh. I rang this guy, mm. and I said, mate, is this really happening? Mm. You know what he said? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so you couldn't have gone I, to the shop or... No, I had real egg on my face here and I felt sorry I doubted him. <laughs> Another victory. And a, not a blow something wide open. Mm. Could be, though. All right. Just forgot to get the sound effect ready. <laughs> now, now that I think about it. <laughs> Do you want to... Oh, jeez. Now that we're talking about yeah, it... I mean, Jack, <laughs> you don't normally get that into it very quickly. Yeah. So, like, there's plenty of time for Jack to find... Yeah, Jack, you've got two or three minutes here <laughs> to find <laughs> the sound effects of blowing something wide open. But just as I was about to bring up something I wanted to talk to you about, <laughs> I did realise that this is, A... B a, a, far, a far-reaching yes, scandal, right? And B, something I've investigated myself. Wow! Now that that, that, that happens, that is a PM, a perplexing moment. <laughs> <laughs> that, that you've actually Just done. Watch some... your watch your potty mouth. <laughs> Don't. It's not a perplexing moment. This is very, very, very much a um, a BM. Just a banal moment. <laughs> because I do, sometimes I investigate my own stuff. Yep. Sometimes people send them in. Keep them coming in. Hamishandy.com okay. if you've got them. Um, it is a Monday as well, which is good. i got a lot of files. i got a lot of files that I'm going through. Um, but I don't want that to discourage people. Because it's... You know, what this I'll, segment I'll, is, for people who've just maybe joined the show for the first time, welcome. Yep. I try to blow open a scandal. Yes. I blow it wide open. Yep. No one's safe. Scammers are terrified. People that scam people or things mm. usually, as soon as they hear this segment on the radio, start packing a bag for yep, the airport. Exactly. Under the assumption that I'm going to get them. Because yep. I will one day. I can only do one a week. The case files are huge that I'm working through at the moment. Mostly my own stuff. People do submit ones. <laughs> oh, never your own uh, stuff. Keep and them, that's why you, it's such a perplexing moment. Do keep them coming in. Yeah. HamishAnnie.com. Yeah. Um, Got to be individual to you, not the generic ones. Yeah. Yeah. But only because it can be quite cathartic to get it off your chest. Okay. It can be good therapy. I'll never get to it because mm. I'm so busy. I'm a one-man department. Yeah. Um, but this is one I discovered okay. myself. Stand back. She's set to blow. <gasps> Look out. Fire in the hole. Hamish is blowing this wide open. Amazing. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. i tell you who I'm blowing open, Ando. Mm -hmm. The low level or entry level toy car market, okay. Matchbox car. Although I'm, I don't going after Matchbox not actually specifically Matchbox cars or Hot Wheels because yeah. they're good quality. Yeah. I'm talking about knockoffs. The right the entry level unbranded, non-specific, tiny generic cars. tiny car, die cast car market. Yes. And one group in particular, mm -hmm. some of the police cars that are getting sold globally. Mm -hmm. The police car market, they know it's a slam dunk, for especially for little boys. They've got a two-year-old boy. 
So you always see a police car at a you know two dollar shop or a toy store or the supermarket or something. They have to have it. Yep. They want it. And these cars are usually about two to three bucks, so they're not too expensive. I've bought a couple now in my time, and they usually I don't know why they usually say rescue or something on them. So I think sometimes they think if they write police, like they're you know, but they might as well because everyone else writes police. Like yes. they're the most confusing ones, the ones that look like yeah. NYPD cars, and they've got you know rescue, rescue. force written on them. Yeah, or I something. don't think guys. That- yeah. One NYPD's company not- specifically goes to the police and negotiates the, the exclusive license rights. And I don't think selling a, pol- a rescue force, an international rescue force car in Australia is going to get the ire of the NYPD yeah. and they're going to come down at you. So you might as well sell a branded one because you're duping us in another way. Okay. I have strong circumstantial evidence to back this up and that's all you need to blow something wide open. I reckon they're taking poor selling models of normal white cars. <laughs> And they're just chucking sirens on them and writing some police force rescue stuff on the side. I give you two examples. Yes. One I was willing to let slide. Okay. It was a white station wagon. Yeah. Kind of an old one, like a seventies one oh, with right. modern sirens on it. And I went, mm, this stinks. I reckon you couldn't <laughs> sell that. It's come back into circulation. You've given it a modern look. Yeah. Because it's not a retro police car. Okay. Here's the one that got me. A white V dub Beetle, the new Beetle, <laughs> done up to look like a police car. And they went, hang on a second, this just didn't sell. Well, because what kid wants a white I VW Beetle? Ever seen a Beetle police car <laughs> with a gerbra? <laughs> That's just in case the cops want to, uh, you know, want to keep yeah. your spirits up once they've cuffed you and put you in the back of the car. I haven't had. I want to tiny car industry. <laughs> Stop rebadging <laughs> low sellers as cop cars. Hey, Ham. Yeah, what's um, up? You know how you like to blow things wide open? It's my favourite thing. Yes. And you take down criminals, naysayers. Corporations, uh, if I corporations, have to. Corporations, uh, liars, cheaters. Yep. You did one on Monday. I, I threw one out there, a spontaneous one. I yep. uh, wasn't sure I was just going to blow something wide open, but mm. yeah, about toy cars. Smashed the beast, though, yeah, saying that uh, they're rebadging toy cars. There's no such thing as a police beetle. Unfortunately, my friend. Are you joking? In Germany. And a few other European countries. Not good enough. That is no, that is a police beetle. Nah, but Mate, mine was that white. Is... The white, one I saw was white. <laughs> well, I've given you the option. I've got the sound effect ready for you to be able to blow it back together. Why are you selling that stuff in Australia? That's what I'd ask. <laughs> Keep your bloody beetles in Europe. Hey, it's been a while. It seems like the world, the world's criminals, mm. gone back to relaxing. It felt like that... Stage where in Batman all the criminals were together yeah. and the Joker's like, "This is easy." Yeah, I sli- I mean, I, I sli- no one to stop us. Do I slightly blame myself yeah, for should. the Kim Kardashian um, jewel heist <laughs> because I haven't been blowing things wide open <laughs> enough and I've maybe. maybe let criminals worldwide get confident? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't think we can point all the fingers at me. <laughs> Pointing nine of my ten. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing: that if you've not heard this segment before, this mm. is where I blow open mm. scandals, scams. Really attempts by nefarious forces worldwide mm. to um, abuse the trust that we have in each other as human beings. Yep. Um, whether Pick, they're pickpockets. Not into that. Yeah. I catch you. Yep. I'll, um, Thieves. Riddles if they're being used as a, as a distraction. Yes. I'm against riddles <laughs> if they are in sequence uh, to try and find um, a bomb. A bomb. Uh, <laughs> I don't like a sequence of riddles leading to an explosive device. It's one of my pet hates. <laughs> So this is where I do, although I said that, in Blow Something Wide Open, I do use, I do use, a, <laughs> do use an explosive device with a rather long and dawdling lead up. So I suppose there are some similarities, but it is time to blow something wide open. Stand back! She's set to blow! Look here! Blowing this <laughs> wide open. Amazing. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. Hey, if you <laughs> listen to it, it really is quite heavily explosive themed. This <laughs> so not my biggest pet hate. Yep. And uh, this came in uh, from an, a very alert listener, mm-hmm. young uh, Jordan Hansen. Jordan emailed in. And and gave me this, uh, gave me the tale, gave me the facts of this tale. Sometimes I'll uh, dip into my own cases. Sometimes I'll <laughs> deputise members of the public. Yep. And I read Jordan's, and I went, "Oh, this is a good blow something wide open." Yep. Called him back, and I said, "Mate, when you say dip into your own cases, yep. Um, I mean you have a very shallow bowl of cases. I can dip though. 
can, you know. It's, they're very visible. So if you, you put the corn dip in, you'll get some salsa on it. I can dip. I can dip. But I was actually about to do one of my own, which involved <laughs> yeah. a swimming pool. Okay. <laughs> that had a few dodgy forward. things going on. Okay, we look forward to that next maybe week. Maybe next week. Definitely. Maybe next week. Not maybe. Well, unless another bigger case comes up. Because I, I was getting all my evidence together, and then Jordan's email hits, okay. and I rang him up and I said, mate, this is a good boy, something wide open. And he said... Yeah, didn't actually submit it as a blow something wide open. And I went, oh, that's right. You haven't actually written blow something wide <laughs> open in there. And I said, but it's, it, it makes the cut. Okay. And he said, yeah, you're right. Um, Get your diamond. Thanks out. so much, home. Yeah. Um, here's, it, it happens at a nightclub. He's, um, he's from Adelaide mm-hmm. um, and it involves a popular nightclub in Adelaide. Mm-hmm. This was last weekend. I think, I believe Friday night. Everyone's having a lot of fun. Around about midnight, DJ gets on the, uh, the PA system and announces to the club, guys, Tex Walker's in the house, captain okay. of the Adelaide Crows. Club goes absolutely bananas, yep. right? as you would, yeah. because, um, you know, geez, local... Local legend. I mean, probably the sporting national legend, legend of that that city. Oh, he's, he's Adelaide's greatest yeah. sporting hero. So, hey, guys, Tex Walker's in the house. Just roof lifts off. Yeah. Jordan says, you know, he got as excited as everyone else. Um, <laughs> you know, Gee, they love... <laughs> They love the Adelaide Crows captain coming in, don't they? Well, I mean, what a move for your club too. Yeah. This is this is huge. This is like you know, yeah. this is you can't get a bigger celebrity. Yes. However, when the DJ yelled out a few minutes later, Warney's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> he yelled out Warney yeah. and uh, pointed to a corner of the club. Yeah. That's um that's when Jordan began to go. <laughs> I think this DJ <laughs> is just. Naming celebrities yeah. and um, and pretending they're in the club, and I said, "Geordie, I'll take it from here, mate. That's a huge <laughs> suspicion. Yeah. That's a huge charge to level mm. at the club. Um, and you know, we can't... the nightclub that is at the nightclub. Yeah. Sorry, not the Adelaide Football <laughs> Club. <laughs> yeah, uh, the nightclub. It look, like, it sounds like a scam. The DJ's running. I'll take it from here, mate. And you've done. You know, thanks for reporting it. Yeah, and um, safely safely step away. And let me take you it step away. I hung up the phone. And uh, had a think about it, and I think he's right. <laughs> Blown wide open. <laughs> I think that's exactly what that it's, DJ's uh, doing. It's good ex- extra investigation for you. <laughs> I've thought about it for ages. It is time to shine a light of justice oh, no. on scoundrels. I'm just realising that we're so behind and this segment takes so long. It doesn't take too, it only takes too long because I've got a lot of business to get through. Yeah. Um, I'm not padding, if that's what using me of. Stand back! She's set to blow! Look out! Fire in the hole! Hamish is blowing this wide open! <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. Why would I pad and uh, when I'm snowed in and flooded yep. by cases, cases that people are bringing to me mm. on top of the ones I'm chasing myself? Mm. So as I say every week, thank you for everyone submitting cases at hamishandy.com. Yep. There's no way I'll ever get to them. Yep. Cease and desist. Mm. But if you must, That's keep him coming in. Keep him, do keep him coming in. This is where you shine a spotlight of justice on any villains out there, thieves, burglars, fraudsters, yep. identity thieves, uh, any thieves of any kind, petty thieves, any yep. thieves. Not a heart thief. Someone's stolen your heart. I won't chase them for that. <laughs> no, Osher Gunsberg does that on the weekends. Steals um, hearts? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're a literal heart thief, yeah. yes, you're right up there with a liver thief or a kidney thief. And um, shame on you. Uh, no, I was just, uh, he, he has a love line type Oh, show. that's right. Yes, yes he chases same. heart thieves. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he, you're right. He's got that sorted out. Ando, stop distracting me. I've got too much to get through. Um, I was actually getting ready to prosecute one of my own cases today, <laughs> which involved a, a disco lighting hire company. Really? That I just had beef with. I didn't have enough evidence to proceed. And you know the burden of proof I, oh, I expect is very, very high. Hmm. So instead, this caught my eye. Sent in. Um, by Jazz Y, possibly a code name. Jazz um, lives in Terrigal, mm-hmm. Central Coast, and said, look, i got a case I need you to blow wide open. Standard, standard introduction, like, you know, I'm so sorry for bothering you. I know you've got heaps of cases. That's right, Jazz. Um, her local ice creamery, um, let's just call them Terrigal Ice Creamery, mm-hmm. which is their name. They have a staff member here um, at the ice creamery. They've got a staff member there that wears a T-shirt that says 47 Flavours. Okay. Now, it's a T-shirt 
that Jazz reckons is made for the ice creamery. Yeah. So it's not like that person's just wearing a different yeah. T-shirt to work from another restaurant or yeah. something that has 47 flavours. Jazz was waiting for a while for an ice cream, decided, heck, i got a bit of time on my hands. Mm. Um, I'm good at counting. Mm. I can easily count up to 47. I'll have a little count. Tub audit. Tub audit. A classic tub <laughs> audit. One of the most powerful moves you can do in the justice system. <laughs> a tub audit. It's counted 44. Now. That's three shy. I mean, I thought, if she said 46, I would have gone, oh, she's counted wrong. You got one. One could be out the back getting filled up. <laughs> but 44 Four. is nowhere near the advertised 47 from the T-shirt. Yeah. I did a bit of digging around. Mm. I thought, I can't blow this ice creamery open because I love ice cream mm. and I love Terrigal. So I can't, I can't, and these people represent both. So I can't blow them open until I do my own research yeah. called the Terrigal Ice Creamery. Okay. Hello, this is Terrigal Ice Cream Shop. How many flavours do you have in your tubs right now? Answer. Oh, got him. <laughs> That's definitive. What are, they, what are they running for? Why would they run? The <laughs> customer came in. Oh, okay. Got him. Got him. Yep. Got him. Now, look, that was a dramatic recreation. <laughs> Using Jack, yeah, I know of how I it's would okay. expect the yeah. phone call to go down. Yeah. Just didn't have time. Oh. I didn't think of calling them until you know twenty <laughs> seconds before we came back on air. No, because you kicked me out because you wanted to record something quickly with Jack. Oh, that's enough. <laughs> That'll do. And uh, mm-hmm. probably a lot of villains woke up this morning and went, uh, "Nah, yeah. he won't do it today." Today is a good day to get away with things. Silly, though, because you normally do it on Monday. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. It shows that they haven't been paying attention to the format of the show. Usually when I blow something wide open, I do do it on a Monday. Monday. Yep. Yeah. Here we go. Stand back. She's set to blow. Look out. Fire in the hole. Hamish is blowing this wide open. Amazing. Amazing. He's done it again. Oh, what a great guy. <laughs> and uh, you know... I, I obviously am a bit of a sheriff of Australia. Yep. I like to keep things in order. I'm a you've pretty done, lenient you, sheriff. Yeah. You've done, but you've done global blow things wide open. I don't mind. Yeah. I'll launch an attack on Finland. Yeah. While they sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a pretty, you know that I'm a kind of a pre chilled kind of guy. Yeah. I'll, I'm the kind of teacher that gets into class and first things first, I just tear up the textbook and I go, you know what? We're going to do class under a tree today. Yeah. And don't wear your shoes. Yeah. Let's have fun. Yeah. Let's learn a different way. But sometimes things happen where I have to blow it wide open and I, I can't sit by and watch an injustice unfold. Yeah, sure. And um, you, you realise they're very different things. Teaching, teaching someone, and teaching, 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 teaching someone teaching about, is about justice. <laughs> no. Knowledge like, justice. Well, you, you said sometimes you go and teach without a textbook, other t- but there's sometimes I must blow something wide open. Do like, it by the book. <laughs> <laughs> Do it by okay. the textbook. Okay. And he, this is a textbook plus something wide open. Okay, okay, okay. Because sometimes a case will cross my desk. Usually I'm working on my own cases, yeah. but sometimes a, case, sometimes a case will cross my desk yeah. where I go, okay, everyone, I just turn around to the office, like whoever's working with me, mm. private investigators mm. or surveillance yeah. experts, whoever I've hired to work on that week's case, I just yell, everyone, yep. go home. I found something here that I must... Inf- I can handle this myself. Okay. And they're usually wrapped because they've been working for 50 hours. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This, uh, we're back to our traditional blow so you want to open, which is all padding no. before... No, Yeah, a Context. fair bit of filler Context. before you try and take down a small corporation... Context. ...without naming them generally. Context. Can't just paint <laughs> okay. the Mona Lisa smile. Yeah. Must paint her whole head. Okay. Then you put the smile on. That's the good bit. Got to have the context. Okay. <laughs> so this comes in from alert listener, Drew... Less than a week ago. Okay. A freshie. Said, um, at my school, uh, we had an athletics carnival, and every year they had an award for cheering. Mm-hmm. The cheering award. This is for the person who raises the team spirit the most and cheers the loudest. Okay. Obviously, um, they're giving these awards to unfit boys. <laughs> <laughs> who dislike Athletics Day. Yeah. So that rings some bells for me. We didn't so, have a cheering award at my school, but it would have been nice to have one. Yeah. Because so it would have given me a glimmer of hope. Way to have everyone participating. That's it. So you go, okay, only, let's say, 30% of you are going to be running today. Yep. Of that, 5% of you are good. Yep. So 
there's got to be we have there's to be a larger lesson here yeah. than um fit guys get the girls. Yes. Um, we're going to show everyone that you know making up some chants, yeah. running up and down just in front important. of the crowd, team spirit, just as important. getting behind Yellow House, come on Blue House, yeah. Red House stink. Chuck him in the sink. <laughs> all, that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's an important part of Athletics Day. Filler. So, <laughs> oh, from, coming from the mouth of a fast boy. No, we, uh, me and the nerds loved doing no, that no. sort of stuff. I'm telling you this is filler. Oh, right. Sorry, I thought you said cheering's filler for Athletics Day. <laughs> no. Yeah, right. No, no, no. <laughs> so, here's what Drew's, Drew's gone. Right. So, there was always a suspicion that he, the cheering award... I mean, it's reverse. Uh, it's when people like sort of what's the what's the thing? Where reverse, it's like, racism, reverse racism, reverse racism, or thing. like reverse yeah. political correctness, or whatever yeah. it is. They're like, it never goes to a fit kid because yeah. some of the fit kids are cheering as hard as they can. Yes. Like some of the guy, the hundred meters finalist, mm. he might be the best cheerer of all. Yeah. But the teachers, they're sharing it around. Yeah. They're not giving the fit kids the yeah. cheering award. They say it goes to the unfit kid. He said this was proven yeah. at my Aths Day the other week when. They called the name of the boy to win his cheering award to come forward. Yeah. And he was sick. He wasn't present that day. <laughs> they had already decided who would get the cheering award, shattering the illusion that they watched with a careful eye and picked who was the best cheerer on the day. Wow. Because old one. Benny Barnes wasn't there. <laughs> and we knew he'd be what's, the least fit. Cool? Doesn't say any. His name's not Benny Barnes. <laughs>